All right. Um, in a biology class, you might look at um, simple animals before you start looking at people, right? Because simple animals, for the most part, have the same thing that people have, just maybe not as complicated or not as involved. I don't know. I sort of had a quack as a biology teacher, so I know next to nothing about it. But I'm imagining <laughs> all right, that that's the case. So uh, the first program that we looked at last time is like that. We could consider that. It, it is maybe the, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it has everything that a larger AJAX application would have. It's just small and simple. All right. So what, what I want to do is I want to point out the main features of it so that we can see those main features again when we look at a bigger example. After we review the, the small example, our next task will be to do something similar to what you have to do for your assignment. And that is we're going to take the quiz that we did in PHP, all right, and we're going to Ajaxify it, all right. Um, one thing I don't think I mentioned last time is what is Ajax? Oh, close. Actually, Ajax, as we know, is stronger than dirt, right? <laughs> I say you could you could tell you know that that's sort of a te uh, an age test of the students at the class because that was an old uh, old advertisement. Ajax, it, it actually depends. The the initials allegedly either stand for nothing I've heard said or stand for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Yeah. Um, the asynchronous part is the part where the client waits for the server to respond. Uh, I, the analogy I gave last time would be like giving a voicemail message. All right. And the important thing to realize is it's not as though Ajax is a language. Ajax is a particular way of using um, the, the, the languages of the web, specifically JavaScript and something on the server. All right? It doesn't have to be PHP on the server. It could be ASP.NET on the server. It could be JSP on the server. It could be Perl. It could be any code on the server. But that's de-emphasized in the name because, again, it could be a different platform. Plus, the server really has sort of less of a role in AJAX than it does in sort of the traditional model because the server is only responsible for providing the data. It's not responsible for doing any of the formatting of the data, really. You know, it's not responsible for the presentation, just supplying the data. Whereas the JavaScript really has a bigger role because its role is to get that data and then do something with it. At any rate, let's look at what we were working on last time. And we'll start reviewing with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight a section of code. And you tell me what it does, what role it serves. All right? This line of code, what does that do for us? Okay, that's close. The, the statement was something along the lines of it creates a variable to hold which browser is being used. That's part of the way correct. Does anyone want to add to that definition or, or description? Yeah, it's creating an object that's going to represent our pipeline to the server, the, the means of communication between the client and the server. That HTTP variable is going to represent our XML HTTP request. All right. Now, the function is what does the browser detection. That's this function here. If you look at this line, it says HTTP equals create request object. So the create request object function does its thing and it returns a request object. And that request object gets stored 
in HTTP. Now, as we know from um, the difference between JavaScript and PHP, that HTTP is a global variable because it's declared outside of any of those functions. So therefore, it can be used within functions. So anytime you see a reference to HTTP in these functions, it's referring to that variable and it's referring to the object that handles the communication between the client and the server. All right. So yeah, that's creating the pipeline between the client and the server. And the process that does that, which is this, does browser detection. All right. Someone describe this function for me. What is that code doing? Go ahead. Yeah, it is preparing to talk to the server. It's preparing and then actually making the request to the server. All right. Again, remember that HTTP variable is the connection, the pipeline between the client and the server. And what we're doing here is we're setting a couple parameters and then we're actually making the request. So we're actually sending that request to the server. Now let's look at these two instructions because these two instructions are formatting the request before we make it. What is this line doing? This line is actually identifying what script we're going to make our request to. So if we're making a request to the server, we're making a request of a specific script that's on the server side. All right. And in this case, the script's name is convert.php. So that's the name of the script that we're calling. And in addition to that, we're passing some data. If you remember, this was a conversion to convert between uh, centigrade and Fahrenheit, so we're passing a temperature. That temperature got passed into this function as an argument. We're formatting the URL and adding that temp on the query string. So when we're done, convert temp is going to be called and it's going to pass on the query string a variable called temp, and that variable is going to be what comes from the text box. This gets triggered, by the way, in our particular case, by tabbing out of the text box for temperature and actually changing the text box for temperature. So we have an on change event that says, when the value of this text box changes, call this convert temperature function and give it the value of this object. This object being the text box itself. So, here we're specifying exactly what our request is. Now, the get and the convert PHP roughly correspond to the method and the action of a form, right? That's where we've seen stuff like this before, all right? We've seen get and post uh, on forms for the method. We have seen the URL of the PHP script as the action. So, in an XML HTTP request, that sort of serves the purpose of the method and the action. The only difference is, is we have to format that URL to include what we want to pass on the query string. So this is where we're actually saying what we're, what we're going to be requesting. We're going to be requesting that script with that parameter. We're passing our values on the query string, so the method is get. All right. What does this line represent, this line of code? When it has, when it has uh, the values needed, it sends it back. It's waiting for the bus to go four, was it? OK. That, um, this deals with getting the response back from the server. And the, the, the mention was made of a response code or, or a response status of, of four. Does anyone want to elaborate that? When does, what is handle response, first of all? Okay. Handle response is the name of the JavaScript function that is going to handle the response that we get back from the server. Now, that function gets called, and this is getting back to your statement of we're looking for a 
status of 4. That function gets called every time the status of that, ob uh, of that object gets refreshed. So 4, the status of 4 is sort of the final answer. All right. But every time the status changes, and again, if you read in the textbook, it shows you the exact value, but one, it's sending the request, two, the server's gotten it, three, it's thinking about it, four is, okay, here's my final answer. We're really mainly only interested in the status of four, which is a final answer. If it was sort of a long process where maybe the server would take a little bit of time to do its thing, we might put code in here to display a different message as the status was changing, just to give some sort of update to, to the user. But again, you know, we're not doing anything that extensive, so we can just say, hey, we're going to wait until it's all done. So the analogy I gave last time is this is like my return uh, phone number if I leave a voicemail message. All right? Give me your answer at this function. So that's the function that will get called when the server is done doing its thing. Remember, it's asynchronous, which means that in the next line that's going to actually make the request, we don't immediately get a response. So we couldn't put, we couldn't put code here to handle the response, right? Because we don't know if we have a response yet. We actually have to wait until the server says, okay, I'm done. That's asynchronous. So it makes a request and essentially waits there until it gets a response. Every time the status changes of that request, of that HTTP object changes, this function gets called. And as I said, we're really only interested of a status of four. A status of four means that the server's done. And this is just code to process that. If you remember, we got back two numbers from the server. We split it, they're separated by commas, we split it and that creates a two element array and then we grab each of the two elements and display them in the result. So that's sort of a review of what we did last time. Yes? And what is the next statement, the send null? Oh, the send null? This actually makes a request. This actually, this actually is what makes the request to the server. These two things are preparing the request object. This actually makes the request. So when the server gets to four, yes. it has not done the work yet. No, when this, repeat that please. When the server hits four, has it done the... That's when everything's ready. That's when it's ready to do what? That's when the server has responded with the answer. So a status of four indicates that the server has finished handling this request. Okay, let's, let's trace this through. I have my on change convert temperature this value. So if I tab out of it, that function convert temperature gets called and the argument to it is going to be the value of the text box. So here I format the request. I say request object, this is a script that you should call when you get submitted. When you when I submit that request, when I send this request, this is what I'm sending it to. I then give the name of the callback function. That is, I'm telling that request when the server is done, in fact, when the server status changes at every point, call this handle response function. I then make the request. Okay. This line of code actually makes the request. Now, nothing then executes until the server starts sending back statuses. So when the server gets the status, it sends back, or when the server gets the request, rather, it sends back a status of one. So this code kicks in, and it doesn't do anything because we're looking for a status of four. All right? The server processes some more, all right, and the status is two. This function gets called again, status of two. Three, finally, when the, when the server finishes everything and gives the response, this function gets called and the status is four, which means that we have our answer. And therefore, we can go and format that answer. 
the answer comes in, in this example, as this attribute of the request object. Okay, so response text contains the name of or the values that the server is returning. Did that clarify that or still a little fuzzy? Okay, go ahead. Yes. Uh, it, why is that null? It's null because we're using a get function or, or get method. Because we're using the get, we're passing the arguments or the, the parameters on the query string. And therefore, we don't need an object for those parameters. If we made it post, then we would need a uh, a, a request object, uh, or we'd have to set those parameters in, in that object. And then we would create an object, would set the parameters within that object, and would use that object when we called it. So yeah, that's the reason that that's null. Yes? Would that still work if you switch the HTTP send in the unready I'm not sure I understand. Okay. Okay. It won't work. It, it, I, I, these two statements define the request. In other words, the statement um, that you made is correct. It doesn't call this function at this point. It simply says, hey, Mr. Server, Mrs. Server, when you're done, call this function. So that doesn't call the function. That simply says, hey, here's the function that you call when you're done. So you're going to HTTP send, then you're going to the function. Well, we're going to that function when the server responds. We don't immediately jump to that. All right? We don't immediately jump to the handle response. But we do. When we send it, we wait, and every time the, the server sends an update, a status update of that object, then that function gets called. So think of these two lines as prepping the, the request. All right? We're saying the request that we're making, and we're saying who to call when you're done, or who to call when your status changes. And then we actually make the request, and every time the status changes on that request object, this function gets called because we said that that was the callback function. We said that that's the function that you call when, um, when, when you're finished. All right? Now, let's imagine, let's think about um, what, what would be different in a bigger example. All right? We're going to go and we're going to try to Ajaxify our quiz. All right? So, let's think of what's going to be different on the client side. Are we going to have this line of code in, on our client for the quiz? Sure. Right? We still need the pipeline. If we're going to make an Ajax version of our quiz, we still need the pipeline between client and server. Are we going to need this function? Sure. We still need to make the request object. What about this function? Well, we have this function in there. Right. We won't have this function, but we'll have a function like this. And what, if you're going to describe what this function does, what would it be? Prepare and make the request um, to the server. All right, so yes. Since this is a different, totally different application, it's grading a quiz, not converting the temperature, we're going to give it some different values, all right, and we are going to uh, call a different script. So, yeah, it'll look different than this, all right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're, we're going to put something totally different in the letter, and we're going to put a different return address on it, but yeah, we're, we're going to go through that action. It just will be formatted different. What about this function? 
Yeah, we'll have something like it, but again, the details of this might change, right? Because in this case, we're looking at two values, you know, the two temperatures. In my example, we're going to look for something else. We're going to look for, um, you know, um, something different, all right? So, let's go and let's, any questions about sort of where we're headed for this? I, I guess the point that I'm trying to illustrate here is that um, the shell of this program is going to stay the same. The details are going to be different. All right. We still need to create a request object. We still need to create it this way. We still need to make the request, but that request is going to be formatted differently. We still need to handle the response back from the, from the server, but we're going to need to um, handle it in a different way. Now let's think through. Let's think through before we do it. I'm, I'm a big proponent of look before you leap, think through before you code. All right? Now, what is my request going to look like? For the, in the case of the quiz. All right. In this case, I have my request is convert dot PHB question mark temp equals and then it's going to equal to some value. So if we were going to look at this request, it would look like this. The URL we're calling is convert dot PHP question mark temp equals whatever temperature we enter in. What's the request going to look like for the quiz? All right. Yeah, that's kind of what, what I'm asking. In other words, what are we going to call on the server side? In this case, we call this on the server side. Convert.php temp equals that. In the case of our quiz, we're going to call some script. Let's call it grade.php. And we're going to give the answers on the query string. We will. The, the first pass through, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the cheap way, all right, take the easy way out, and we're going to do it. We're only going to make sure that there's one answer in the array. All right, there's only one question in the array. Then we'll build it up so that there's more. So we're going we're gonna to try to build up to that. All right. Um, but anyhow, that's ultimately what our request is going to look like. All right. Answer zero, answer one. And then answer two, answer three, answer four. What do you think we should get back from the server? What do you think we should get back from the server? In the case of the temperature conversion, we got back from the server two temperatures. A temperature in Fahrenheit and a temperature in Kelvin or whatever they were in. What should we get back from the server in the quiz example? Okay. Correct or incorrect? Um, and keeping in mind that there could be, at some point, multiple questions, all right, we probably are going to want a list of whether each question is correct or incorrect, right? So the response we, get, we want to get back from the server will probably look something like this. Y, N, N, Y, and so on down the line, right? That would indicate we got the first one right, the second one wrong, the third one wrong, and the fourth one right. We could even do something like we could put an X in there if they forgot to answer it. All right. By giving the answer for each question, or, or let, let me rephrase that, by giving um, a response for each question, that gives us the most flexibility, right? 
because then we could say, we could have the client count up how many questions they got right and say you got four out of eight questions right. We could change the style of the questions that they got wrong, right? We could put an error message for the questions that they forgot to answer. So I thought you guys were going to say what well, would show how many questions that they got right, all right? We could do that, but that would limit our flexibility on the client end, right? Because if we simply return how many questions they got right, we wouldn't be able to differentiate and say, well, the, the questions you got right were 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and the questions you got wrong were 2, 3, and 4. But by returning in this format, we're, gonna, we're able to uh, go in and, and present the output as flexibly as we want to. All right? So, what I've done is I've taken the quiz that we originally wrote, I'm going to want to open this again, that we originally wrote as a post back, and we're going to Ajax it, all right? To make things easy on us to start, and again, this is what I, what I often suggest, again, don't try to do everything in one leap. We're going we're gonna to make this simple and do only a one question quiz to start. We'll keep the array structure, but we'll only do one question. So let me get rid of this array. And so I only have an array with one element in it. So we should only get one question. Now, I can get rid of some of this code, right? Because Ajax, we ain't doing a post back. We are not doing a post back, all right? We are calling the server um, asynchronously. So I'm going to go and... I can actually remove all that code and simply call display form. I can get rid of this via validation. I can get rid of display results and I can get rid of Display error message. All I really need to do is display the form. All right? So, let's go and let's look at and let's make sure that we're displaying the form. All right, we're displaying the form. All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to change this, not to call the server with an HTTP request, but instead to call the server with an XML HTTP request. So, in other words, what we want to do is we want to change this button from a submit button to a plain old button. Why are we doing this again? So it doesn't make an HTTP request to the server. Because the submit button, what it will do is it will call this script with this action and it will call as an HTTP request expecting to get back a whole page. So we don't want that mechanism, all right? We don't want that mechanism to to uh, kick in. We want to write our own code to do this. So I'm going to put an on click event on the button and I'm going to call grade quiz. Alright. 
So on click, I'm going to call JavaScript. And what's that JavaScript going to do? It's going to make my request, all right, and give the callback function name so that when the answer has been given by the server, the client can display it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to copy some code from this guy. and put it in here. And this is no longer convert temperature, it's grade quiz. All right. So, yeah, we'll, we'll keep that as get, but we'll change this to grade. What are we going to change this to? Answer zero. And what's going to be here? Well, document dot get element by ID. Answer zero dot value. Well, in this particular thing, remember, I, I'm rigging the deck and there's only one question in my quiz, right? Okay, so I know that there's only going to be uh, one, element zero, all right? We'll go and expand it to add another one after we get this working and then, then we, can, we can build up to where there's an unlimited amount again. All right, so... What else do we need to write code for on the client side? Handle response. So let's make our function a handle response. Whoops. Actually, let's copy it. Now, for now, I'm not going to put anything here. All right? I'm just going to put something empty here. All right, we're going to build up to this. Now I think it's time for us to go over to the server side and write the server side code. Remember, what's the server side code to produce? The server side code is to produce as output a series of Y's and N's. All right. Uh, we'll start out, yes, it's right, no, it's not right. Okay, so I'm going to go make a grade PHP program or script. Let's go and edit this guy. I should probably put these arrays in an include file, right, to make sure that they stay in sync because right now they're, I have these values in two places. But bear with me, we can do that later on. For now, we'll just make sure that we behave ourselves and, and keep that graded or keep that correct. So we'll go here. I don't need to do this anymore because I'm not dealing with the form. I'm not dealing with formatting it. All I'm doing is calculating the results. Uh, 
I can actually get rid of this, and I can get rid of this. And what I can do is I can look to see for i equals zero, i is less than count, um, count of that array, increment i by each time. I can grab the answer off the query string. I can do the math to calculate the correct answer. If the answer is correct, what do I want to output? A Y. Right? Because they got that answer correct. So if they got it right, I want to print a Y. Otherwise, I print an N. Now, and I think I want to close that, and I think I want to end my PHP. There's a lot going on in this, right? There's a lot going on on the client side. There's a lot going on on the, well, there, there's some stuff going on on the server side. That makes me uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable when I have too much going on at the same time before I've done any testing. Right? Because right now, if I were to run this, if it didn't work, I would have no clue what was wrong. Alright? Therefore, I'm going to do what's called unit testing. Alright? There's, generally speaking, two kinds of testing that you do in software. Unit testing and system testing. Unit testing is where you test a piece of something. System testing is where you, te where you test everything taken together. So, if uh, the unit tests all work, the system tests still could fail if the communication between the modules isn't working. Alright? So, even though you test each of the units, that doesn't mean that when you put them together they're all going to work right. So, the first thing I want to test is I want to test to make sure my PHP code returns what I would expect it to do. Alright? So, in this case, we only have a one question quiz. What's the answer that is correct for this one? Six. Six right? So, in other words, if I make this request, PHP What should I get back from the server? A Y. If I do anything else What should I get back? An N. Now how am I going to test this? I'm going to test it this way. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to go to my browser and I know what the URL should look like. Right? The URL should look something like this. So I can just go in and not test the, the, the server side code going through the AJAX interface, but just test the server side code by itself, simply by typing in the URL. So I can type in localhost grade that PHP question mark answer zero equals and if I type in five it should give me an N which it does. If I give an answer of a six then it gives me a Y. So now I know that if I call this URL and let's see, let's go in the notepad. P, 
yes, so I, so I, I, I know my server-side code is correct. Because if I go and put that URL in, I get the answer that I expect out from it, a Y. If I put in something else, I get the answer that I expect of an N. So now I'm pretty sure my server-side code is okay. I'm not doing any validation. We can worry about that later. All right. But as far as a Y or an N, the server-side code is working. Now I just have to make sure that A, the client side works, and B, the client side when connected to the server side works. All right? Now, follow this logic here. All right? Because I'm, gonna, I'm gonna still going to apply the approach of creating, the, creating my test one little piece at a time. All right? I've proved to myself that if I give this URL to the server, it's going to produce the desired results. So, the first thing I want to test is what? Is that the URL I'm giving to the server? Right? How can I test that? Well, I can do this. I can just copy that and put our good old fashioned alert in here. So if I've done this right, what am I going to see? I should see in my alert box something that looks like this or something that looks like that. All right. If I do, then I know I'm calling the right script. You know, this is where you have to apply either inductive or deductive logic, right? One of the two. It's like if I know, if I get, if I call the script the right way, I get the right result. Now I'm going to test to make sure that I'm calling the script the right way. Because if I'm calling the script the right way, and when I call the script the right way, I get the right results, then I know I'm going to get the right results. Right? All right. So let's go and let's test this now. So I have my on click to call grade quiz. Grade quiz, the first thing it will do is it will alert and show me the URL it's going to call, and we'll go from there. So, all right, quiz, I type in a four, I click grade, and I have to take my word for it, but that text box says grade.php. Answer 0 equals 4. Is that what it should be? Yeah, that's what it should be. And I know, all right, that if I call that script correctly, I'm going to get the desired answer. So I could try a few more tests if I want. Looks good, right? So, in essence, I've tested two-thirds of this. Right? I've tested to make sure that I'm forming the request correctly. All right? I've tested to make sure that the PHP script, when it gets called correctly, returns the right results. Now what I have to do is I sort of have to test this. And I have to make sure, hey, the results are getting back to this guy so that this guy can format it. So what I'm going to do, again, is I'm going to put in a alert, because I'm not necessarily ready to format it yet. We can look at that. We can look at formatting it in a second. But I'm not quite ready to format yet. So I can go in here and do an alert of response text. What is response text again? HTTP dot response text. That's the answer that it got back from the server. All right. I could, for laughs, just to make sure that this is getting called, I could put an alert in here for each of the ready states so that we'll see it go one, two, three, four. There's your answer.
All right, so now let's try this. Where was I? So we type in for grade. That's the script that's calling. That's correct. Something is not right. That's the script is calling. Okay, there we go. I forgot to refresh. There's one. That's the request state, ready state. Two, three, four, boom. There's my answer, a Y. So if I type in six, I get a Y back. If I type in a four or five, grade, format sat, status one, two, three, four, five, finally, the answer is no. So, I tested this systematically to make sure each step works as opposed to just running it and saying, hey, it doesn't work. What are the key things to test? That you're calling the script that you think you are and you're giving it the right parameters. All right? That's one thing to test. Second, another thing to test is when I call my script, just from the browser, my server-side script from the browser, and give it the proper parameters, does it produce the right result? And then finally, does that callback function get back from the server the proper answer? And in each case here, that was yes. The nice thing about this is I pretty much know this code is going to work. Right? So I don't really need to test that. I mean, I guess something could potentially go wrong with a new browser version or whatever, but I'm pretty safe in knowing that code's going to work. And really, what I have to test is three pieces. That I'm formatting the, the request correctly, that uh, my server-side code is producing the right result, and finally, um, this handle response is right. Now, this handle response can do something like, like this. Alright, let's see if this works then. Take those alerts out. Oops, I'm getting an error. A JavaScript error. Let's do this in Firefox to find out what's wrong.
Line 28, it's telling me Accurate, get okay. element by ID, answer zero, dot, value. Let's get rid of this alert. I don't want it anyhow. It does have that value at the end. Let's see. Answer zero that value. Um, well, I don't know. All right. Uh, what I will do is I will take this and debug it, and I will upload the correction uh, to this when I get it. All right. We'll see you over in lab then.